Joining me now, Strategic Wealth Partners President and CEO Mark Tepper, Anderson Capital Management Chief Investment Officer Peter Anderson, and Macro Trends Advisors Founding Partner Mitch Rochelle. Peter, let me start with you. The Federal Reserve yesterday raising interest rates for the first time in three years to combat uh, inflation we haven't seen in 40 years. The central bank signaling increases at each of the remaining policy meetings for the rest of this year. That's seven rate hikes, plus four more next year. That's the expectation. Mm -hmm. Fed Chair Jay Powell commenting on the war in Ukraine and its potential impact on the U.S. economy. Listen. The implications of Russia's invasion of Ukraine for the U.S. economy are highly uncertain. In addition to the direct effects from higher global oil and commodity prices, the invasion and related events may restrain economic activity abroad and further disrupt supply chains, which would create spillovers to the U.S. economy through trade and other channels. Peter, your reaction to not just what the Fed did, but what the Fed <laughs> said yesterday. Again, the Wall Street Journal editorial page points out today, even with 11 projected interest rate increases in the next two years, rates would still be well below the level of inflation. So negative real interest rates, that's how far <laughs> behind they are. Well, you know, I couldn't agree more, Dagan. Uh, we have been behind, the Fed has been behind for years, frankly. I've been saying for years that interest rates are too low, especially to take the 10-year Treasury. So, uh, look, he's off to a good start. You know, this isn't our first rodeo when it comes to interest rate uh, hikes. But for some people out there, it has been because it's been a while. But it's, it's necessary for the economy to grow. And also, it's a good sign anyway because it, when you're raising rates, it means the economy is strong and profits are rising. So for those that haven't been through uh, interest rate cycles, it's somewhat confusing. And of course, we wring our hands. Has that been enough? Should he have done 50 basis points? But given the confusion that we also have now coming out of COVID and the Ukraine conflict, it is very difficult to thread this needle. But I do have confidence that at least we're, we have started. In fact, in fact I was concerned that uh, maybe the Fed wasn't even going to raise rates at this meeting just because there's so many other moving parts. But hats off, I think it is the right direction. And lastly, we also have to realize that when you have a rising interest rate environment, a lot of people have thought that stocks sell off. But when you look at the past 12 cycles of rate increases, the S&P 500 has done on average about 9% return. I would take that any day. So I'm very optimistic that we're moving in the right direction. It might not be to everybody's satisfaction how quickly we're getting there. And of course, we have to concern ourselves about supply chain issues, but at least we're moving forward. Mark. Goldman Sachs is warning that the odds of the U.S. falling into a recession have increased due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the firm cutting its forecast for economic growth to 1.75 percent. Mark, and you add in a Fed Reserve, the markets might have gone up in the past when the Fed's raising interest rates, but our central bank has a $9 trillion balance sheet that it has to begin unwinding. And what? And We've never seen that before. We've, this, is, this is a movie that is brand new, and I would suspect that people are underestimating the asset price decline and the blow-ups that might be on the horizon as the, the Fed really removes this accommodation and destroys money. Mark? Yeah, I mean, look, the Fed's in a very delicate situation where they, they have a dual mandate. We're at full employment. They have to fight inflation. So they have to hike aggressively. They have to be extremely hawkish. And it does put us at risk. And like you said, Dagan, not a lot of people are focusing on the potentially awful impact th that surrounds the unwinding of the balance sheet. It, Goldman Sachs puts the risk of a recession at, at like 35%, I think. I, I agree recession risks are rising. I, I think it's probably closer to 50%. I mean, you just kind of go through all the data points. You've got consumer sentiment plunging. It's actually below the, the worst it was during the pandemic in April of 2020. You got PMIs about to roll over. The Fed is signaling seven hikes this year, plus unwinding the balance sheet. And, and Dagan, I don't think we can handle seven hikes this year. I, I, I think we can handle maybe four. And then you throw in unwinding the balance sheet. And if you look at the yield curve, a lot of people only want to talk about the twos and tens, right? That hasn't inverted yet, but it's flattened down to about 20 basis points. But the yield curve, 
looks like a slice of bacon. There's inversions all over the place. The fives and sevens are above the tens, the 20s above the 30. And my biggest takeaway from yesterday's Fed move, Dagan, is that Jay Powell, because you saw the market rally like 2% after he, he right. talked, Jay Powell has become a master of putting lipstick on a pig. I mean, in the same breath where he mentioned seven hikes and unwinding the balance sheet, he communicated that the Fed will be methodical, mm -hmm. calculated, pragmatic. Uh, and for some reason, the market's like, oh, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. So he's not just going to be reckless. But, you know, very, very delicate situation for the Fed to navigate, without a doubt. Uh, Mitch, uh, Mark just insulted Sal's everywhere, but... <laughs> We're uh, looking ahead to February. Uh, so to back up, so February housing starts and building permits come out at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. Mortgage rates have already gone up uh, before the Fed moved yesterday, one percentage point uh, year to date at about 4 percent following the move up in the 10-year Treasury. What are you expecting and how high will mortgage rates go and what will be the impact on the housing market? Degan, if you just follow the, the trend, we could see by the end of the calendar year a 5 percent mortgage rate. But one of the things that I've been looking at is inflation and its impact on the first time home buyer, because it's not just a higher mortgage rate, it's the fact that their wallet has shrunk considerably and that they're stretching to make a payment. Everything else in their life has cost more money. Uh, the flip side of the coin for housing more broadly is there is so much cash on the sidelines that is waiting to buy a home, hoping that prices fall because prices have gone up 20% year over year in many markets across the country. And if we do see a slide in housing prices, uh, I think that cash that's on the sidelines is going to hop back in. So I think the housing market's going to remain strong. It's just that those first time home buyers that we all care about so much in the American dream, they're going to feel it the most uh, in the year ahead. Thank you so much. Peter, great to talk to you this morning. Peter Anderson, Mark, and Mitch, you sit right there.